Yeah. Tell us, sir. Uh, maybe it's the calm before the storm. What's the storm? Could be the calm. The calm before the storm. Today, the world is confronting a public health emergency unlike any we've seen in over a century. We are facing a highly transmissible and deadly virus, which not only claims lives, but also disrupts the very foundations of our society. The American healthcare system is being taxed to the limit. Our economy is spiraling downward, and our population is being paralyzed by fear, stemming from a lack of a coordinated response and a dearth of accurate, clear communication about the path forward. Our window of opportunity is closing. If we fail to improve our response now, based on science, I fear the pandemic will get worse and be prolonged. There will be likely a resurgence of COVID-19 this fall. It will be greatly compounded by the challenges of seasonal influenza. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Many of us knew the word epidemic, but after many months now, we're all too familiar, familiar with the word pandemic. Now, a new word is coming our way that health experts are warning about. It's what they're calling a twindemic. And our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us to tell us more about what that is. So let's get right to it. What is a twindemic and why is this so concerning? So, Tom, a twindemic is exactly how it sounds. It's essentially the confluence of two different infectious disease outbreaks occurring at the same time. And in this case, we're talking about influenza and the COVID-19. So back in March, when we first had really a pickup of virus activity with COVID-19, the flu season was on its way out, so things were starting to quiet down. But now, as we head into fall and winter, we know that the flu season is going to start to pick up with a peak in December and January. And at the same time, we also know that COVID-19 activity is going to start to pick up as the weather gets colder because the virus survives longer in the atmosphere when it's colder and because people are more likely to be congregating indoors rather than outdoors as we've been doing over the summer. So the twindemic is really the concern for the perfect storm of the two outbreaks occurring together and not just causing a lot of morbidity and mortality but also overwhelming the healthcare system again. Summer has come and passed The innocent can never last Wake me up when September ends Like my father's come to pass Seven years has gone so fast Wake me up when September ends Here comes the rain again Falling from the stars Drenched in my pain again Becoming who we are I want to ask you more, but is twindemic a new word? Did we just make this up or have we experienced or used the term twindemic in the past? As far as I know, I think it's made up. So it's specially coined for what we're going through. But but it's coined, I think, based on the Latin for where the pandemic comes sure. from. So now what about the because we're talking about the flu and flu shots and there's always this hit and miss aspect of flu shots. There's also some people who get their shots early, some people who don't get them, some people who get them late. There's going to be a lot more emphasis on the flu shot this year and certainly a lot more pressure on the flu shot to be the right shot. Absolutely right, Tom. And the biggest thing this year with the flu season is that it's going to be unpredictable. So on the one hand, because we're wearing masks and washing our hands and socially distancing, that is, of course, going to decrease the transmission of the flu. As my memory rests, but never forgets what I lost. Wake me up when September ends. I know uh, my fellow citizens here in Arizona and across the country are saying our prayers for those affected by the Hurricane Katrina. Uh, I want the folks there on the Gulf Coast to know that the federal government is prepared to help you. 
But on the other hand, we don't know how virulent the flu is going to be this year. To your point, we don't know whether the vaccine will correctly predict the protection that we need to offer. And then finally, we also don't know how many people will go get the vaccine because they're worried about COVID-19 concerns. So I want to give three S reasons for why every single person should get the flu vaccine this year, even if they haven't gotten it in years past. So the first is the First S is selfish. So you want to be selfish. You want to make sure you don't, you know, uh, get both of the conditions at the same time because that could be disastrous. And you also want to make sure that if you end up having flu-like symptoms, you don't end up having, you know, ending into the hospital with COVID-19 because that's what would happen if you got the flu this year. The second is a selfless reason, which is, again, to try to really prevent those hospitals from getting overwhelmed and make sure that we use our healthcare resources for COVID-19. And then the third is a scientific S, which is that a vaccine against one virus actually boosts our immune system to fight other viruses as well because it revs up the activity. And to the point you made about when you should get your flu shot, the sweet spot is really September or October because too early means you're not protected late in the season and too late means that you're unprotected early. I think there will be vaccine that initially be available sometime between November and December, but very limited supply and will have to be prioritized. If you're asking me when is it going to be generally available to the American public so we can begin to take advantage of vaccine to get back to our regular life, I think we're probably looking at third, late second quarter, third quarter, 2021. We're on track to deliver and distribute the vaccine uh, in a very, very safe and effective manner. Uh, we think we can start sometime in October. Uh, so as soon as it uh, is announced, we'll be able to start. That'll be from mid-October on. It may be a little bit later than that, but uh, we'll be all set. I think you misunderstood the questions, but I'm telling you, Here's the bottom line. Distribution is going to be very rapid. He may not know that. Maybe he's not aware of that. In terms of realistic timelines, we're really not expecting to see uh, widespread vaccination until the middle of next year. We'll have manufactured at least 100 million vaccine doses before the end of the year, and likely much more than that. Hundreds of millions of doses will be available every month, and we expect to have enough vaccines for every American by April. How long does it usually take, this will be my last question, Mr. Chairman, to uh, develop an apple vaccine? I think the fastest prior was two years and usually four to six years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We may never know where this disease came from, but we do know that this vaccine is a result of the courage and perseverance of a remarkable few. We shall now begin the drawing, John. First MEV1 vaccination are those people born on March 10th, March 10th. It's not that hard to give yourself an injection. What about me or my father or you? I'm going to take a bow while you get hauled in front of Congress. What do I say when they ask about that? You tell them that I told a loved one who told a loved one and that I'd do it again. Without you, Allie, you have saved millions of lives. That's a great story. It also happens to be true. Now, how often can you say that? The next citizens to receive the MEV1 vaccination are those born on the date is that? January 11th. January okay. 11th. All right. 144. 
day That's, one. It's <coughs> still uh, 200. Uh, more than 200 birthdays, huh, that haven't been called, so that's good. That's a good number. With a growing concern over the notion that chemical and biological weapons were unaccounted for and could potentially fall into the hands of terrorists, the Department of Defense wanted to test the nation's readiness for such an emergency. In June 2001, the DOD conducted a war game called Operation Dark Winter. A uh, Dark Winter was a, a major exercise that was uh, done prior to 9-11, earlier in 2001, to look at the effects of a biological terror event. And it was kind of a scary scenario. It, uh, there, we would lose a lot of people in, if a really effective bioterror event occurred. The simulation evaluated the government's ability to respond and communicate with the public. And the exercise even included mock news reports. Since the diagnosis of 20 smallpox cases in Oklahoma City 12 days ago, hundreds have now died, thousands have become infected. We had to you know, think about things like uh, you know, quarantines and martial law, you know, and things like that. Uh, all of a sudden, our system wasn't our system anymore because we had this terrible thing going on and we had to change. We had to you know, change the way we thought about things. We had to change the way the military interrelated with the, uh, the civilian world. And it was really an eye-opener. And the conclusion were tens of millions of deaths, no commerce between states, no airplane flying for six months, and war between Oklahoma and Texas. Well, and you've talked about, uh, along with other epidemiologists, other scientists, other doctors, Dr. Fauci, uh, Dr. Gottlieb, uh, people that have devoted their entire lives uh, to, to following uh, pandemics. Uh, You've been warning about what happened in the fall, what was going to happen when the flu season collided with this pandemic. Donald Trump, of course, several months ago said it was going to be gone by the fall. Nobody, uh, no scientist or doctor that I've spoken to agrees. And do you still believe that the fall could actually be the most catastrophic time for us because the flu season is going to collide with this pandemic? Yeah, well, first of all, we're going to see an explosion of cases in September just related to the reopening of colleges, universities, and high schools. So that's going to be the next kind of big fire line that we're going to have to deal with. The second thing is it's indoor air. Uh, influenza may or may not be a challenge this year. We're hardly seeing any of it in the Southern Hemisphere right now. But I can tell you for certain, indoor air is going to be a huge challenge. Uh, the more we're together inside, the more we're together with people, we're going to see uh, major transmission issues, these kind of super spreading events that we see. So I do see the fall as being a kind of uh, coronavirus on steroids time period for this country. And uh, that's why we have put forward our plan to say, you know, pay me now or pay me later if we lock down get better control like these other countries have done where they could basically live with the virus in a very different way than we are right now the only answer the fall is going to be a challenge are you going to allow the government to tell you you have to wear a mask no. you could call it a mask mutiny wearing a mask can actually cause you to get sick so wearing a mask can actually cause you to get sick yes absolutely so and a new model from the University of Washington estimates around 33,000 lives could be saved by October 1st if nearly everyone begins to wear a mask. Americans will be wearing masks for several years. This is coming from a researcher at Johns Hopkins University. In a recent interview, he predicts wearing facial coverings will become the new normal. His statements come as an uptick of positive cases continues across the country. Latest numbers show 42 states are seeing an increase of infections. He adds that being outside and social distancing will help dramatically reduce transmissions. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. Utopia. Utopia.
is a story about a genius scientist who made horrible viruses. Ebola, MERS, Zika. Predicted in dystopia years before the first case in the real world. Yeah, you're one of those, huh? <laughs> it all has to mean something. <laughs> what have you done today to earn your place in this crowded world? That's great, it starts with an earthquake. You want to stay alive, come with me. They hate to kill every single person who's seen Utopia. Everything in Utopia is real. Viruses, biowarfare, man-made disease. I'm the foremost expert on this virus. Jesus. It's a pretty serious situation. You bet your ass it's a serious situation. The Stearns flu has now been declared a national pandemic. This is our undoing. We can fight it. We'll just be going into the belly of the beast, practically begging to be slaughtered. Yes. Yeah, what, what? You have to do to do good. None. None evil. <laughs>